to do is capture the assets of your clients. Well, I've got all my clients' money. Then I'll say, well, how much life insurance did you do last year? Well, I don't do life insurance. Then you don't have all of their money. As a matter of fact, research shows that only 29% of investors have all of their assets with one advisor. Only 29% of investors have all their assets with one advisor. So today, hopefully, I'm going to show you this sea change that's taking place. Investors are tired of stuff falling through the cracks. Last year, of the people that passed away, 56% of them didn't have a will. Oh, but that's okay. They don't need a will. They didn't have that much money. All right. High net worth individual investors. These are individual investors with $10 million in investable assets and above. Get this. 47% don't have a will. 37% don't have an estate plan. 23% don't know the most cost-effective, tax-effective way to be charitable. Now, here's my question to you. Why don't they have a will? Why don't they have an estate plan? How, how many of y'all have this? Clients who had the estate plan done, but they're just not going to sign it. They just haven't signed it yet. Have anybody run across those people yet? Why won't they sign their estate plan? You know why? They don't get it. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm giving my money away. I don't get it. What they're looking for is they're looking for a single point of contact that they can say, would you please review this for me and tell me if this is the right thing to do? April 17th, 1775. Paul Revere jumps on the back of his horse. He rides north for 17 miles. He yells those famous words, the British are coming, the British are coming. 90% of the people that heard his battle cry go and fight in the Revolutionary War, 90%. At the exact same time, another gentleman jumps on the back of his horse. He rides north taking a different route. He yells the exact same phrase, the British are coming, the British are coming. But only 10% of the people that hear his battle cry go and fight in the Revolutionary War. Here's my question to you. Who is the other guy? Now, what you can say is, no, wait, Longfellow wrote a poem about Paul Revere. That's why we remember Paul Revere. No, 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 what? At the moment, 90% of the people that heard Paul Revere's battle cry go and fight the Revolutionary War versus 10% of the people that heard William Dawes' battle cry go and fight the Revolutionary War. What? No, 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 no. 90% versus 10%. You know, oh, William Dawes spoke to more people? You know, what? Here's the question. Why is it that they listened to what Paul Revere had to say. Why didn't they listen to William Dawes? They said the exact same thing. They said it with the same level of enthusiasm. You know, why is it we don't remember William Dawes? Here's the point of the story. Is Paul Revere was more trustworthy. All right. why, do, why do clients leave you? What's the number one reason why clients leave you? Number one reason, lack of communications. Number two, lack of trust. Where does performance fit in this whole thing? Performance is number six. This is the stock market in 1990, right? I don't, do, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a stock investor. I'm not going to do it. I, you know, suddenly my neighbor's buying boats and cars and houses on, on the lake. I'm going to do it. Doggone it. Stay the course, stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. Just get me out. Real estate. I don't, I don't invest in real estate. I don't do it. Don't do it. Don't. You know something? I've been a real estate investor all my life. I watch HGTV flip this house. My neighbor's buying real estate. He, I'm going to buy. I'm going to do it. Dog, going to say the course, say the course, say the course, say the course. Just get me out. All right. What have we always taught them to do? When you retire, take the number 100 minus your age, right? This number stays in equities. This is what goes in the treasuries. They got whacked. They got whacked. You know something? I'm done. I'm going to put my money in treasuries and just, and just, you know, safety, safety, safety. Oh, by the way, who owns most of our treasuries? You know that China owns more U.S. treasuries than the U.S. Treasury has in U.S. treasuries? Did you know that? Why do they own so many treasuries? Because they link their dollar, they link their currency to the U.S. dollar. They joined the WTO in 2001. The other 150 countries, 149 countries that make up the WTO are trying to strong arm China to delink their currency. China says, we'll do it in due time. They've even hinted that they'll do it by the time they host the Summer Olympics in 2008, right? If they delink their currency, what would they be buying less of going forward? 
Treasury. What's going to happen to the Treasury? Oh, forget that. What's going on now, tit for tat? You know, you've got lead on your Barbie dolls. You know, your food is bad. You know, so you've got this tit for tat going on because we want them to delink their currency, right? And what did they say just a couple of weeks ago? You make us delink our currency, you know what we're going to do? We're going to sell our treasuries. Why do they sell their treasuries in April and May? Just to show you what will happen if they sell 1.5% of their holdings. Market gets whacked. 63 bay treasuries go down 4%. Just by, what if they sell 3%? What if they sell 5%? What's going to happen? I think what's going to happen is investors go, you know, forget that, forget this. I'm going to put my money in. About the same time that China is going to delink their currency and boom, then get whacked one more time. I'm going to close with a proverb and one last story. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you know but you don't act, then you don't know. And all I'm suggesting is, now you know.